Good morning, children. Today we are discussing the second chapter in our biology part, that is, microorganisms, friend and foe. So we have studied about organisms, living organisms, and we learned that living organisms are of basically two kinds: they are plants and animals. So apart from these two plants and animals, there are other kind of organisms which we cannot see with our naked eye because they are of very small size. We call such small organisms as microorganisms. Micro in the sense very small. So where do we find these structures? We see the microorganism sometimes in our house itself in your kitchen itself if you see a spoiled bread if any bread piece is moistened and it is kept aside for few days you can find some grayish patches on the bread slice the grayish patch it consists of so many small dot like structures powder like structures filament like structures of course you may not be able to see that the filament like structure with your naked eye but you can take help of a magnifying glass. If you have a magnifying glass, you can see that the small structures that are grown on the bread slice. So you will identify some organisms which are very small in size. So we call such small, such microorganisms as microorganisms. And the lesson is about friend and foe. Is these organisms helpful or harmful to us? Either ways, microorganisms are helpful to us in some way and sometimes they may cause dangerous, dreadful diseases and many other problems even. So these things we are going to discuss in this chapter, microorganisms. Now let us look at the different categories of microorganisms. Viruses bacteria, fungi, protozoa. So in this, certain microorganisms can be seen with the help of a magnifying glass. That means a hand lens. You can use a hand lens to see. Which one you can see here? Fungi. Certain kind of fungi can be seen with the help of a magnifying glass or a hand lens or with a simple microscope. But certain microorganisms can be seen only with the help of a compound microscope. You need compound microscope to see bacteria and protozoa. You cannot see them with the help of a hand lens, just like as like a fungi. But there are certain organisms which are still microscopic, which you cannot see with the help of a compound microscope. Those are the viruses. Viruses are very, very small which you cannot see with the help of even with a compound microscope, then what do you need? You need a special microscope called electron microscope to see the virus. Now let us discuss some important points about these four categories of microorganisms. If you see the viruses, as I told you, they are very, very small, very microscopic. We need electron microscope to see them. And viruses, they cause many diseases, like they cause chicken pox and a common flu, viral fevers and all these kind of viral infections, polio. Polio is caused by a virus. So many of the diseases caused by these viruses cannot be cured. Prevention is the only way to control the viral diseases, like chicken pox, flu and polio. These are all caused by viruses. So viruses, when they are outside, in the outside environment, just they are like a dust particle. They cannot carry out any metabolism. They cannot carry out any activity. They are not considered as living. But when these microorganisms enter into a cell, living cell, then they become active. Then they use the apparatus of the host cell and they produce large number and they cause diseases. So that is about viruses. Now let us go to the bacteria. Bacteria. Even bacteria also cause diseases like tuberculosis, typhoid. So these kind of diseases are caused by the bacteria. 
TB, tuberculosis and typhoid and bacteria, they spread through water or by air or by different insects and they cause diseases. So bacteria are comparatively bigger compared to viruses. And the next one is fungi. So in this fungi, yeast is the unicellular fungus and molds. Molds are found on the rotten food. We discussed that the moist bread slice, if it is left undisturbed in a warm place for some time, we find that certain growth is found on the bread slice, that is mold. So mold and yeast are the fungus and many of the fungus also cause certain skin diseases and many other problems. Now see the protozoa. The protozoans are the microorganisms, even they also cause diseases. They cause the diseases like malaria. Malaria is caused by a protozoa and elephantiasis. Elephantiasis is caused by protozoan. So they cause different diseases. Protozoans are much bigger compared to this bacteria. So these are the different microorganisms. Now let us see where do we find these microorganisms. Where do they live? Where do we find microorganisms? Microorganisms are omnipresent. Omnipresent. What does this mean? Omnipresent. They are present everywhere. Microorganisms, they can live on land. They can live in water. They can live in other organisms. See, different plants and animals. So, all the plants and animals, they are carrying so many microorganisms with them. Even including you, in your gut. In your digestive system, millions of microorganisms are existing. They are living. That is their habitat. Means the place which where, where they live. So microorganisms are there even on our bodies. Microorganisms are found in different varied climatic conditions. Certain microorganisms, they can live even in hot springs. Where the temperature is very high, more than 50 degrees centigrade cell, that temperature. So certain microorganisms can withstand the temperature. Certain microorganisms, basically we know that microorganisms cannot resist heat and uh, salinity, that is salt and that is a very cooling temperature. But my, there are certain microorganisms which can withstand very high temperature. Microorganisms can live in hot springs, more than 50 degrees Celsius temperature they can live. Certain microorganisms, they live in very cold climatic conditions, icy areas, in ice mountains, certain microorganisms, they are able to live. Certain microorganisms are able to live in very salty conditions. So they, they can live either in extreme hot, extreme cold and extreme saline conditions, salty conditions. So they can present at any of the environment. So that is the place where they live. Certain microorganisms, they live with other organisms. They cannot live individually. Certain microorganisms, they can live individually. Again, some organisms, they live in colonies. Say for example, you see fungi, they live in colony, yeast colony. If you see amoeba, Amoeba is an individual organism. It doesn't live in colony. Individually it lives. Separately it lives in the water. So microorganisms, they live individually or they live in groups as colonies. Certain microorganisms, they, live in the, they can live in the environment. Certain microorganisms, they live only in the other organisms, either on the plants or either on the animals, including human beings. So these are the places where the microorganisms can live.